What's up guys, this is your boy Rusian with another Raid Shadow Legends video and you guys can probably tell where I'm going with this one. Uh, anywho, uh, so as you guys probably know, big controversy right now with uh, some of the events uh, to do with Thor Hammer Point and pretty much stuff like this. And as you guys know, uh, if you guys don't know, you should definitely check it out. I'm going to be linking all those guys right in the comment, uh, not in the comments, but in the description of this video. So basically everything is started with uh, Colrad. Uh, he made some commentaries about everything that's going on with uh, how Plarion snicked uh, a couple of the points, the hammer points in uh, one of the events that shouldn't be necessary for people to complete, that should have been optional. And then you had uh, JGiggs reacting to it and then you had nub raids actually reacting to the reaction so uh just like if that was inception and i was leonardo dicaprio let me react to those guys and all right so just so you guys know i have a couple of notes in here i'm not going to cover everything or this video is going to be hours long uh but i will cover the most important parts so let's take a look it really did screw people over by saying this bonus summon rush is coming it in the game for ages, obviously having the Titan event planned in advance as well, but not saying, not disclosing that this bonus summon rush would be part of the Titan event until literally it was too late for you to do anything different. Right, so it was a, yeah, it really <laughs> felt very bad. But let's see how this goes. Uh, I'm a big fan of JKX, big fan of Colorad. I don't know, I just, maybe this is too much. It's gonna be a really long video. Let me know if you like this or if it's too much. Um, but this is, I wanted to watch this and I said, hey, why not watch it with you guys? So let's give it a go and let's see how it goes. All right, so yeah, uh, like I said, uh, I'm doing a reaction for him, but it is, it's true. It's like Inception at this point. But the reason I make this video too, guys, is just so you remember, it's something we need to talk because we don't want this to happen again. Uh, I made a pool and people are really upset. Uh, I've been on Discord, I've been a lot of places and people are really upset about this. So I feel the more we talk about, the more we can actually make players and see that this doesn't work and actually aff affect their, their play rate, blah, 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 blah. their player base. <laughs> As far as they get into this, I, mean, I think that they've done this enough times. Mm -hmm. that they know, and, and there's been speculation over the years that they do this type of stuff on purpose. One, the drive sales of shards, of course. Uh, but two, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna jump right in. It's like, there's, been some, there's been some speculation about everything. Plarium, like, oh, my favorite ones are like, Plarium is, is messing. Like, the developers are hacking into my individual game to change my clan boss rates. But I don't get shards, so I pay money. I don't, don't think so. so. There's a lot of silly speculation. I do think that this one is pretty well handled, though. Generally, thought, General Fox, do they? I do see Call Red's point where I think that possibly, possibly, like, it's just they did something stupid, right? That they didn't even. Think about, oh, people get angry, like, you know, it's just, it, can, it's, it is possible to be really dumb sometimes. And just for something that seems very obvious, you have passed unnoticed. Uh, like, maybe they changed around the events at some point, included the bonus summon rush in the tank event, but we're doing it in a rush. Someone in a meeting didn't notice, and they're just like, yeah, okay, cool. Gave it, signed off, and it went through, and they hadn't even realized. I do think it is possible for it to be a mistake, but then again, you would think it more likely that this sort of stuff is planned far enough in advance that it seems very suspicious. And uh, yeah, I think it also forces people to participate in more summon events. So, all right, so, and, and that's what I feel is the problem. Uh, I get it. They need to make money. Uh, they snicked up one of, of us. But the biggest issue, and I mentioned in another video, is there are too many summon events back to back. And those are not just events like uh, two time Lego or anything like this. Those are events that you had to actually do to be able to get Tor. So that, that's a problem. You didn't even rest a day and you had another event right on the back. And I, I feel that's one of the problems. And then the last one, where someone wait, some people waited to be able to get their shards. They're lucky, but if you didn't, if you just complete your fusion, you're still forced to do the last event to get Thor Hammer points. So, yeah, no, that that doesn't work. So I can't remember how I started on this tangent. Let's go back to the beginning. Maybe they thought more than seven siege. Um, you know, I don't think possible to play the big but I think stuff like this, I think I think they got this back So clearly, at this point, they don't have to do it. So yeah, I, I do feel like with this Titan event. I'm expecting a Freya deck of fate at the end of it. I think it's very clearly designed to make you pull more shards than you otherwise would. I think that's absolutely true in terms of how they design their events. And again, I think that um, having this bonus summon rush in the calendar, but giving you information, like basically presenting it as if you're giving the information. It's a bonus summon rush. You know about it in advance. Here it is on our official event page. Here's the information, everything that you need to know. Being like, here's the information, you can trust this, but then withholding perhaps the most crucial part of it, which is, oh, it's part of the time event, which is coming up next. I think that is really bad form because it's saying, here, you can trust me. And I'm, in the meantime, I'm stabbing you in the back. 
Um, I think that's really bad. Like I said, it might generally might be accidental. It might have been on purpose. Um, I think it's a general point. There's no question though that you know they, they do try to bait with these charity events. I think like this fight events, it's like coming in with the bonus summon rush, with the really really good actual legendary events with faction unities. That's clearly something you really want to pull on. And an easy champion chase the weekend is looking like that's going to be easy to pull on. And then if they do a fray that can fade, that's easy to pull on. And you can end up overcapping on dying points and pulling on everything and having no shards. Um, or buying shards is obviously what they want. That's just how they make money. They want you to buy shards. They're creating lots of good events back to back that really stretch. Or like a typical thing they do as well used to do would be like here's a two X ancients. Okay, here's an extra legendary event from ancients. Ah, here's a guaranteed champion from ancients. That's something they did a couple years ago very regularly. They would again clump all the shard events together. I guess it didn't make them as much money as they wanted because they stopped doing that. Uh, but it is obviously it is it's a money making tactic. And there's no question. About it. So one of the things that happened with uh, this whole debacle was that now Plarian, and I just watched a Hell Hades video, actually put on the calendar uh, a lot more things and a lot more information. But while we know there is a deck of fates and they will actually give you Thor Hammer points on that, something that wasn't expected, they have no mention about Freya. Now Freya could be coming in a different deck of fate, but you feel they're still missing some stuff, okay? And really, uh, you, you don't have an option. Like, you, what are you gonna do? Like, you open now, you wait for later. Maybe it's not come for a whole month. So, yeah, it it, it just not working. Oops. But the reason I'm like, that they're saying, man, come on. Said, it's pretty simple. You omit facts yeah, that can be helpful to your players. Mm -hmm. And it's clear that your intention in that omission is to create additional FOMO and cause people to spend more money. Mm -hmm. And you're constantly changing the rules that you use for something. And, and, and as a result, players feel like they're standing on And we don't trust you to look out for us. It feels like an adversarial relationship. And I'm like, here's the, here's the question I would have. Like, yeah, their ultimate goal, of course, every game company, every business, ultimate goal is to make money. Consider the negative impact on players' business. Like I said, players quitting, an, an erosion of trust as well, uh, for whatever trust there was in the first place. Like, I can easily imagine, like, the CEO, like, of just, like, Clarium coming in and be like, what the hell, God, like, but you never do this again, you know? Like, you can easily see that. Because this, this is the sort of thing that could easily have now a negative impact on their income, on their sales, on their player base, because it is so bad. And, like, you can see it be, like, a, again, either a mistake or someone trying to be clever, even, like, a manager, like, even potentially someone higher up in, in the game, like, finding events trying to be clever. Like, I can easily see them being, like, serious shit from, like, the CEO or someone, like, someone properly higher up comes in, proper oversight, and it's like, what? This is, like, hey, would you do this? You know, it's... All right, so... Pretty much like uh, Cole, Cole Red, uh, he argues about how omitting facts, right? This is true. Uh, I'm not saying that companies have to tell you everything, but in the most type of game, it helps. And I really feel that people still use shards if they feel like in, in those cases. But it's not what is happening right now with Plarian. So, Nubs actually mentioned about make money, erosion of trust, negative impact. True. I've been talking to a lot of people and I feel people are actually not inclined to spend money they would have spent because they really have no idea what's going on. And I get it, that usually speaks more about low spenders, not as much as Wells and Krakens because they have a budget. So they're pretty much hoarding shards. What is the same situation as me? Right now, I'm not spending any shards. I really don't feel uh, torso is that important compared to what may come. And the problem is, I don't even know if something's coming. So a lot of people are doing this, they're holding on spending, they're holding on their shorts. So besides for Krakens, besides for Wells, uh, nobody's spending. Now, I don't know, maybe Krakens and Wells are 80, 90% of their income. So it's worth it. But you may also lose players along the way, <laughs> right? Anyway, let's keep watching. It's not as common, right? Like, yeah. Like, this is just really like, not just a trade. Not just, and there was no information that would tell us otherwise. Right. There was nothing in our history together that indicated that there was anything more than that going on. I know, it's I, I don't think, that's another, have they done this before? I don't think that they've, I'm not sure, maybe they have. I don't think they've quite screwed us in the same way before. They've screwed us before many times. I don't think they've screwed us in this way before. This is a new one. Like, I remember, they did the bonus summon rush in the Incarnate Fusion, so I used that as a reference point when I was looking at the Dwarf Fusion. But it was, like, early in the Fusion, and it didn't have any, uh, didn't tie into anything else. So, that, that was also surprising that the precedent that they had set with the bonus summon rush was that it was not tied into a talking about right? And this one was. That was an extra sort of, uh, an extra trick, as it were. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't think they've done this exactly. Yeah, you see, uh, what Colrad says is we had no prior history of something being done that way in the game, okay? And Nubs mentioned that, you know, no events had been tied to uh, the Titan event, at least not without a warning. So, and that's the whole problem, was the last one being actually completely tied to y your summons. So, you could have skipped a couple of, uh, of the events, not spend so much energy, not spend so many charts, and wait for the last one. But this didn't happen. So that's where people are having the most issues. Like they had no warning, 
and pretty much they had no rest besides uh, from pulling shorts. And yeah, it's exhausting, right? <laughs> So I spoke to my viewers like a fusion plan video, mm -hmm. and I said, yeah, there may be some additional methods here at the but we can't count on them because we don't know. Actually, one thing I'm going to jump in straight away is even before this, one thing before, I know I, I saw comments for sure, people saying like, oh, the lesson I'm taking away from this is to skip the events earlier and always go for the bonus summon rush. Don't do that either, <laughs> right? You can't, you also can't do that. Because I think that's an obvious takeaway from this particular case is, oh, skipping the summon rush on the champion chase that were actually part of the core fusion and doing this bonus summon rush was the better play. All slash shards, better rewards, it was better, no question. But can you apply that to future fusions if they do a similar structure? You can't because they can come around in a future fusion and make the bonus summon rush stuck. They can make it more. Okay, I gotta, I gotta agree with Nubs on that. Uh, that's a problem, right? So let me say next fusion, we have the same issue. We know there are gonna be a special event in the end. So we don't spend any of the shards, right? We, we hold at least two events. Even if we do the short events, we may skip like Dragon or uh, Ice Golem, definitely. So we skip a couple of them. And we get to the end one. Yes, we can actually get enough points. We can complete the fusion, but the problem is the rewards are not par to how much you're spending. Maybe the points are a lot higher. Maybe you have to open 40 different uh, sacred shards to be able to get to the last part of the fragments. You can't tell. It could happen again that same way, or they could do something completely different and still get the, the players with in trouble, right? So. And I think that's what it comes down to. Like people are completely losing trust on playing of how to play the game. You you usually have a certain way you play and you spend the same amount of money. But when things like this happen, it pretty much put you on the water. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, pretty much uh, this whole thing with Dan withholding information. And don't take me wrong, I know Plarian done that before, but the whole deal is the levels where they did this time, right? Um, the other thing too, uh, I can't find right now, but it was mentioned by Nubs, was on the banner uh, for this last event, right? That last Summer Rush. They actually did not have anything showing the Titan event. What usually is the case uh, when they actually put out those events, right? They only did that afterwards when the event was live already. What came in two things, in my opinion, it came in that they decided last minute, but I really doubt it. Or uh, they tried to sneak one on people, you know, and that's what's make people so upset. Keep secrets from us in the tent to get us to spend the unhealthy way. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't trust them. No. And the truth of the matter is, they're you don't have to do that. You don't have to do this. You don't have to act like this. We will happily spend money on games. We are built to spend money on games. We are, I spend money in every other level game I play. Mm -hmm. Literally every single other level game I play, I spend money. I spend money. I spend a lot of money in Summer's War. I spend a lot of money in Summer's War. I don't know if you have a big win football, but always don't spend money on every single level game I play. I would spend a little bit of money. Just because that's kind of thing I like to do. Like, 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 like. All right, so basically what Cole Red's saying is player making us spend in an unhealthy way. Look, I spend money in the game. Uh, everybody else agreed with that. Uh, everybody pretty much spends some money in the game. Unless you're a free to play player, uh, right now I haven't really spent much or almost anything on my low spender account, but sometimes I feel compelled to spend, it's not a big deal. But spend an unhealthy way is the problem. If I need to complete, and some of those events, don't take me wrong, I get it, it's mentioned afterwards, uh, in the most few of free to play, you may not be able to do all events, okay? I get it. But the problem with that is, it's okay not to do all events, but it's not okay when you're investing in an event, you be sidetracked by the game to spend or be forced to spend in a certain way that if you don't, you just wasted pretty much two weeks of your time, right? And that's what I feel he means by unhealthy way. It's like spending is fine, but if you start to dig into your credit cards to be able to just complete an event, spend 50 bucks to get a legendary you know, ch character, champion. I mean, it's not worth it, right? It was the same kind of issue when we talk about spending was to get Xena, for example, right? You had to spend thirty nine 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 to pretty much buy Xena. You had almost no other options besides pulling as many shards as as you could, 
what in a way means you were going to be spending the money anyway. Uh, be with shorts, be with just buying her straight away. Okay. So yeah, that that's really bad. Um, and I, you got, one thing that people forget, for example, if you live in the United States, if you live in Europe, uh, your budget's probably higher than most other countries. Okay. If you go to countries like Brazil, some countries in Africa, Asia, even nine dollars uh, to spend a game is very high of a budget. Okay, and that's what I have problems with too. Okay, you have to really put your mind around it. Not a small amount of money. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of these kind of but our developers, I don't care. Honestly, we are passionate about our games. We want to support the developers. And good developers in our mind are developers who give us value in return for our money and treat us with respect. They listen to us. Yeah, they listen to our feedback. They don't take all of it. But they listen to it, they care about community, and they care about our game experience. And for a while, it felt like you did. There have been quality life improvements in the last year that have been crazy. Like I said, uh, this is, I'm, I'm curious what he's going to say about it, but uh, I, I couldn't think of too many examples off the top of my head, but um, I, I do think that uh, it has been a focus. I think it's something that they genuinely tried to do better this year, and you can say how well they did or not, but I think compared to this time last year, if I had the poll on it, people are feeling more positive at this time. This, and this poll was before this whole controversy, uh, and I actually saw lots of comments people saying, I would change my vote because of this controversy. Um, but I, I did a poll before it, and before this kicked off, uh, people were... The majority opinion was that I think about a third of people were feeling a little bit over a third of people were kind of neutral. Like, I feel about the same about the games I did this time last year. I think about 15% were like I'm more negative. And then I think it was whatever's left, like about 40% or 50% or something, where like actually I feel more positive about the game now than I did this time. Yes, that's the thing. Uh, that's the biggest problem. Like, uh, so Corrad, he talks about how people are passionate about the game. Like, we all are. If you're playing, if you're watching this video, it's because you're passionate for the game. And, you know, they did, uh, they, they buffed some of the champions uh, that needed buffs. They were working on that pretty much almost every week, every month. They have some of those changes happening, What is great. And, you know, Nubs even mentions, yes, people have been more positive than this time last year about the game. In my opinion, they pulled Ninja out of the vault and allowed people to have. Ninja is a great champion, and most when you go against Sand Devil. I mean, he can be used in a lot of other areas, uh, Hydra and everything. But so they made it viable for people to have a champion that, you know, if you start the game not that long ago, you didn't think that would ever happen. So this is great. But the problem is something like that makes you take a huge step backwards. So you do something good, but then you completely lose trust of your player base. It's... It, it, you know, it's it's just bad for you guys. All right, Blarian, come on. Uh, if you need money, I'm not going to be able to. You're going to have everything coming up. Who has a supply and a consumer base who wants that supply, and you provide the value, and you provide the customer service, and they keep coming back. That's the change of loss, and it's all it takes. This is really all it takes. It also would hurt to lower your prices on charge a little bit. But if you didn't even do that, if all you did was just be upfront and honest with us and not pull f like this every once in a while, we trust you. And we trust you, and we like your game, I promise you, you will spend. But until then, I'm going to stay faithful because I trust that you really flattered at JK's belief. I want to know who, who bleeped what. <laughs> I'm going to recommend to everybody who watches my channel to be as careful as possible with their money. Live the free play life if they can, and if they want to spend, spend wisely, spend carefully, and never ever trust them until they prove that they are trustworthy. Does that make sense? And maybe that's what you can get out of the country. But honestly, I'm going to be in there. That's more than worthwhile for me to show. And that's, that's, he's not in there. That's actually great. Like, Colorado absolutely deserves to be in there. Um, All right. So that, that's the last part I'm going to cover. Uh, it's almost the end of the video anyway. But it's what Cold Red says. It's, it's the whole trust, right? Uh, we have issues. Some of the short packs even some wells and krakens have been complained that the value has gone down a lot and cold red just wants player to be more upfront with the players like don't take me wrong the more upfront you are and that's my guess i could be completely wrong but i feel people will be willing to spend more right because you know you're gonna get some from it not this case also if you guys watch how he just <laughs> Hell hate this video, and I'm sorry, Simon, I have to mention that. But on a 2x event, he pulled 200 shards, and he got no legendary, okay? This doesn't make sense. He should have got at least two, uh, but no. So there's a lot going on, a lot behind the scenes, a lot of things that I don't understand, most people don't understand. But what I had problems with this whole thing, Right? It's Cole Red says. Uh, his opinions, uh, the way he's seen that, may keep him away from the content creator program. And then, nothing against him, but Jay Giggs mentioned, oh, you don't have to be. What actually numberates is agree, right? But the reason is, so, and I feel it's a human thing. We forget a lot of times when we're not part of something, how much we want to be. 
And it's very easy for people to say, oh, no, you don't need to be in the content creator program. Sure, you don't. But just so you guys know, and those are numbers uh, that I know from a while ago, you get about 900 jams per week. You get five, five, five star chickens. You get a bunch of energy. You get millions of uh, silver per week. Okay, plus you have a direct line with uh, devs. You're able to get to uh, the test server, what allows you to do a lot more content, allows you to maybe uh, work on some champions that you don't have in your account. So, you know, yeah, it's very easy to say, oh, you don't need to be on that, but you kind of do. And the most if you want to make better content. All right, guys. So, this being said, yeah. Uh, huge controversy right now. Uh, I would love you guys to be able to share this video. Uh, I am leaving on the comment uh, on the comments. Jesus, <laughs> leaving uh, down below uh, all the other videos, the links for the videos, the links for the channels for you guys to take a look. Give your own opinion. Uh, I know I had to accelerate something that Nubs had to accelerate already. That's why I tried to explain what was said. Um, anyway, guys, uh, I hope you guys have. A good end of the weekend, and as always, I'll see you in the game.